and welcome to this week's video. Now this week's video is going to be a bit of a long one so apologies but it is a highly requested video and it is super important that I get down all the points and explain to you about conventions. Um, if you've always wanted to do conventions I really hope that this video helps you or if you've done conventions and you want a few tips I really hope that this helps. Um, I've been doing conventions now for a few years and I feel like I've learned a lot from doing them. My favourite thing about conventions is getting to meet people who are interested in my work or getting my name out there, like passing business cards on to people who've never, you know, never even seen my work before. And getting to meet you guys is possibly one of the most heartwarming experiences that I or will always recommend doing a convention to an artist. Um, it can be a confidence booster, it can, you know, it can be expensive to do them, but I personally think that they are worth it because it's another way to reach out to a fan base or reach out to people who have never discovered your work before. So let's dive into this video. I apologise, it is going to be a long one, but I really hope that this does help to anyone who's ever thinking about doing conventions or if you've done conventions and you just want a few more tips. Okay, my first one is costs. Oh my gosh, costs for conventions can be the most scariest experience. I personally find costs at conventions terrifying. And for conven cost conventions, you've got your table costs, your accommodation costs, your travel costs, your food costs, because hey, you need to eat, and of course, your printing costs. This is the expensive thing about conventions. It costs money to do them and unfortunately it's terrifying. A table at a convention can cost anywhere depending on where you go. Um, some smaller events it can be like a tenner, 20 quid, bigger events it can be 300 to 500 and you know that cost is terrifying. Plus that's the money that you need to make at that event. Holy moly this is the thing that puts a lot of people off. And my biggest suggestion when it comes to costs is try and keep them low and this can be difficult. I always suggest for people who have not done conventions before or if you want to try and keep your costs low is table share. I've done it plenty of times with friends, me and my friends sometimes go, oh this looks a little bit expensive, maybe if we go together we can try and keep these costs low. We'll, um, book accommodation together so we can keep costs low, we'll maybe coach it or if one of us is driving maybe carpool it, we'll always try and keep the costs low because this can affect what you make at an event. If you're going to an event and you need to make say £500 to cover costs of everything and that's before you even start to make profit, that can be extremely terrifying for someone thinking I'm going to lose money at this event and for not for me, I personally, I'm happy if I make costs. Like, it, I know certain people have specific goals that they have to meet, that they want to meet when it comes to doing conventions. Like some people are, uh, this convention is not a success unless I make X amount of money. For me, if I cover costs, the event is a success. Now to some people that may seem like, Ugh, but for me, conventions are a way to promote your work to other people who have never seen your work before. Now this may seem like a backwards way of making things, yes you want to make profit, yes you want to be able to make money so that you can invest in your merch, so you can invest in your table and invest in other conventions. Um, by keeping the costs low you are able to help meet this goal. I've been to events where the table has been like 20 quid and I have not covered that 20 quid. It is terrifying at times but it happens and you can't control it. Excuse me. But in order to combat that what you can do is try and keep your costs low. It sounds like a really stupid thing but it's so simple and you can really really help yourself by trying to keep your costs low. The second thing is I get asked about a lot about printing. Now, I do a lot of my own printing. I have my printer. It is a very trusty printer. I also have my own badge maker as well as um, I print all my own stickers and I 
um, assemble a lot of my own merch myself. Now, as for books printing, I don't do that. That is actually printed by a uh, Mixum, which is one of my favorite book companies to print with. <laughs> Not sponsored, I just really like their printing. I've had a lot of printing done with them practically all my books for the last two years. Um, I really like their quality and I can't sing their praises enough. Um, but that's because um, book printing can be expensive, especially book binding. And I don't have the space for a book binder or the cost for a book binder. And I cut all my stickers by hand um, because I don't have room for a Cricut or a cricket, how do you pronounce it? I'm not sure. Um, I don't have room for that, and plus I have a cat that likes to jump around the bedroom when I'm doing my work. Um, in case you haven't realized, my desk is in my bedroom and this is where I do all my work. Um, I don't have the room uh, for this sort of equipment, so if I want kiss cut stickers, I use awesome merchandise, all that creatives, um, for printing my charms, so for printing these and for printing my wooden brooches, which I have an example here. For printing these and these, I use Zap Creatives. Um, they're really, really good uh, for acrylic printing and for wooden charms. I absolutely love these. They smell amazing, by the way. Um, I use that company for those, but I have used other companies in the past. I've used um, Printed.com, Mixum, Comic Printing UK, Cat Prints, a US based one, but I've heard a lot of really good things about them. Uh, Solo Press uh, for printing flyers and business cards, awesome merch, and I have used in the past Photo Box for my first ever few tables, and that's just to get standard photo prints done. But I've eventually invested in myself and been able to to do a lot of the stuff at home. I do a lot of my own badges now, I do a lot of my own printing now, but if you are ever not sure, the full list of websites is down below. I cannot recommend them all enough. They have all done such fantastic jobs whenever I've worked with them. And I know they are all UK based websites, but that's because I am UK based. Um, but if you are ever unsure about printing, um, like I said, there are Reddit groups, there are Facebook groups that can really, really help point you in the right direction. And if you're even lucky, maybe you and an art friend, maybe your art friend has a printer or maybe you do, you know, you can invest in the paper and the ink together and you can cut costs down that way. I know quite a few people do that. Um, it just makes your life a little bit easier. They are great websites to use, but if you want to do your own home printing, that's what I recommend. So. What should I take? You want to go to a convention? First thing you're going to need is a tablecloth. You are not going to be provided a tablecloth at every convention. You're going to want to make sure that the material is fire retardant. Um, I've seen people use a, a bed sheet, a simple just bed sheet on the table. Um, but I actually got mine from our local market and it was like 50p for this black fabric. It has done me wonders and it's the best investment I made. You want a tablecloth for your actual table um, so that it's on the bottom and you're also going to want a cover up for when your table is closed um, and so that you can clip that to the top of your table to protect your merch if you're going to be leaving your merch there overnight. I always recommend if you are leaving merch overnight put everything that you don't want on the table in a suitcase and put a padlock on that suitcase to protect it because there are idiots out there unfortunately. You're also going to want a float. This is very, very important uh, when it comes to conventions, especially if you're going to have someone buy like a 50p item and they have a £20 note, you're going to need the change to break that. And as well as you, everyone else has their own change. I always take around about £100 float with me. This means I've got plenty of pound coins, plenty of uh, fivers, 50ps, and that may seem excessive, but trust me um but it tends to be when i do a 3d event by the first day that change is all gone so then you have to go and get more change again and again and you're always going to want to keep that flow on you you don't want to count that in your overall um thing at the end of the event because that flow is there to sustain itself so then um you always have change essentially another thing you're going to want is signage this is so important Right. If I go past a table and they do not have prices on their table, I'm afraid to ask. I will not ask how much something is going to be. So I have pricing 
all over my table. I have um, all of my signs uh, printed and I've laminated them all because I got laminated for Christmas. Uh, I've laminated them all and um, so my pricing is clear and concise. You're still gonna get people that ask you how much stuff it is, um, but I always want to have signage on my table so that people don't feel uncomfortable to ask. Because if I feel uncomfortable about asking about pricing, I am sure that there are others that feel uncomfortable too. Um, and when you're behind a table as well, trying to be warm and inviting. You don't want to be looking down on your phone like this, or if you are drawing, try and be like open and accepting to people that come. A simple smile and just asking, how are you? how's your day been? Or how are you today? Can really, really change a person's attitude at your table. You don't want to be like, hey, because some people are a little bit shy. Now, I, I anxiety can happen with a lot of people. They may feel a little bit shy, but a simple smile like hi how are you today how have you found the convention um what you know are you enjoying yourself do you feel okay like ask about a person like it's something so simple that can really help a person just be like oh hello you're, you're interested in what i have to say i mean they may be interested in your work but you're not just selling your work you're selling yourself as an artist this is one of my pet hates going to a convention and everyone is like this or just like this, I'm bored. Like, I hate that because that makes me feel like you're not interested in me as a sales, uh, like, it's, it's simple like sales tactics. Like you just want to be more warm and more inviting, not because I want to make a sale, but because I want that people, person or those people to feel comfortable at my table that they may want to come by again and have a conversation. Like you're not just selling your work, you're selling yourself as an artist. That is so important. Um, another thing, business cards. For the love of God, have business cards because how are people going to find you? Like they will probably see hundreds of thousands of people at this event. Give business cards out like they are water. Seriously, this is so important because that can make a difference between someone remembering you by you having a friendly uh, like demure behind you by you being like this wonderful friendly person and you're interested in them that helps a person remember you that helps a person like you know be excited about meeting you and you know you want to give business cards out because it helps that person to remember who you are and if they are interested they'll come and check you out um my i have business cards i have a sign above my table i have a sign below my table with my name on it i've seen people use roller banners i've seen people use vinyl banners and that is like super super important of course um as well you're gonna want your merch like that's gonna be safe without giving like i mean come on you're gonna want your merch to go with you um you, i also say as well theme your table your table okay so if I go towards someone's table and it's an eclectic mess and I don't know where to start looking, I'm like, uh, I don't know where to start. Um, if I go past a t person's table and I can't see anything because it's completely flat, I'm, I'm, and there's a crowd in front of your table, I can't see anything. I can't see what merch you've got on your table. Um, as well, if your table is uh, themed and it's clear and concise and it has like an overall colour or anything like that. It helps a person remember who you are. So if you have a clear theme in mind, for example, I like to have mine like a garden and it has all flowers. I'll insert a picture. I like to have mine make it feel like it's a garden and there's a lot that I still need to tweak with it. There's a lot that I'm still learning, but it's a clear, concise theme that people will remember me for. It is really heartwarming when people go i remember your table you always have the flowers and that's how you get people to remember you consistently um here's another thing that people always forget take a table emergency kit now this sounds really stupid but you're gonna want um, a table emergency kit for stuff in case you've forgotten anything i always say a pair of scissors some tape some extra string if you'll have the bunting like me um you want to take some blue tack or magnets depending on how you stick your prints up because i always take my uh table like pre-set up with my prints on my boards um but sometimes hey they fall because they're like hey i don't want to stay up here it's too warm um so always take uh, extras with you because it's really important extra signage is really important as well in case like you know one of your signs goes walking for your pricing you're always going to want that there i always take extras just in case 
your pens and your drawing materials in case you're taking commissions on the day or you'll change your mind and you'll go, like, oh, I will take commissions when you originally weren't planning on doing so. The next thing is, what prints should I take? Um, now this can be quite difficult, but I'd say for a first time at event, you're going to want a minimum of six to ten designs. Um, and if you have those designs, you're going to want them in a minimum mixture of sizes. Now, I find that I personally buy smaller prints because I don't have the room for big prints up on my wall. I don't have the room in my art room or anything like that. Um, and I find that um, it's really good mixture. Maybe have some exclusive prints to specific sizes to encourage people to buy a bigger print or anything like that. But you're also going to want it to make like you don't want it to be stupidly expensive i'm going to talk about pricing uh, in a sec but um as well as prints you can make like small originals now these are known as acos which are art card originals um and you can make those as well and you can have those on your table so you have some mini originals and some prints in your table but ideally you should have a mixture of merch now not everyone is gonna want to buy prints some people like to buy things that they can wear so badges are a really good example stickers are a really big thing at the moment um they have been for quite a while and this is because people like to take stickers and they like to stick them in planners they like to stick them in um like the sketchbooks i personally love collecting stickers if i can have artists work all over my sketchbook hell yeah i'm gonna do that um and the, it's good to have an alternative that you have something with a low price point and something with a high price point so that everyone who comes to your table is able to get something if they want something doesn't necessarily that they're gonna mean they're gonna buy anything but if you have some, say, stickers that are like a pound on your table to your prints, which go up to like 10, 15 pounds, they are, it means that someone's able to buy something with like pocket money that they have, or they're always gonna be able to get something from you. Um, make sure to give a business card with every single sale as well so that they remember who they got the work from. Um, that's really important because sometimes like you'll buy a print like, and I can't remember the artist because it was hundreds of artists at this event. Um, it means that they're always going to be able to put a name to the work. Um, you're also going to want to uh, eventually after a bit then you can branch out into alternative merch if you can afford it straight away that's absolutely fine um but you're going to want the alternative merch like key rings brooches pins books etc you can eventually invest in those i would say for a first time tabler i would recommend prints stickers and badges and maybe some small originals my first table <laughs> baby sophie picture here um i had a book of prints some a handful of badges some handmade cards and some stickers and that was everything I had on my table. It wasn't much but it started me off to understand what works and what doesn't work. Research is so important when it comes to events. If you're going to do fan art also be careful. Um, there are some um, places and some people that are very very strict about fan art like very very strict i don't do a lot of fan art these days it is something that i've slowly veered away from it doesn't mean that i don't enjoy drawing it it's just that i've um fallen into the pattern of really enjoying my original work and enjoying my original stuff much more uh, but fa with fan art there are certain ip owners that's a big big no i've been to a conventions and people's stock has been completely seized because of an ip owner claiming it um when it comes to fan art, try and make it original, trying to make it like, so people can tell that it's your work before they can tell that it, hey, this is something of a character that I enjoy. Try and make it a little bit original, try and make it a little bit more thingy so that people can, you know, this is this artist's work, I really enjoy it, not only because it's my favorite character, because it's also my favorite IP. Just do your research before you do certain fan art, before you sell certain fan art, because a lot of IP owners do not like people selling fan art. So just be careful on that. Um, okay, pricing. Pricing is so important when it comes to conventions. Now, um, I'm terrible at this and I underprice myself on a lot of stuff. This is including commissions because I'm always terrified that if I price too high, people aren't gonna buy. But when it comes to selling stuff, okay, 
Do you research and seeing what other people are selling their prints for? Now, I found personally, um, me and my art friends tend to sell our stock at a very similar price, just so that we're not undercutting each other, so that we're not overpricing each other, so that if someone comes to our tables, it's clear and concise what our pricing is. You also, you don't want to undercharge. You really do not want to undercharge. I would say for a postcard print, I would pay anything for from one to four pounds, depending on how much I really like the art. For A4, I will pay anything from five pounds to 20 pounds, depending on how much I like the art and depending on how good the quality of the print is. Um, so do your research. You want to make it so that, say if an item costs you two pounds to make, you're gonna want to double that so you have enough to print another one and then you're going to want to add extra money so on top of that so that you make profit. So you're always going to want to price it e uh, fairly, essentially. Even if an A4 print costs you like 50, 60p to make, don't sell that, don't sell that for like two quid because you're undercutting not only yourself, you're undercutting everyone else that's around you. Minimum an A4 should be sold for is five pounds. Do not do this. I see this happen all the time and it frustrates me. Your work is worth it. You're not only, you know, it's not just the cost of the print, it's the cost of you taking your time into that print. Yes, it's only 60p to print. It just, oh, I'm gonna have to calm down. Let me take a sip of tea. Don't worry, we're almost done. Another thing, okay. And this is possibly the most important thing for me table layout okay here's a tip for anyone who wants to do conventions do not have your table flat okay second there's a crowd behind any table whether or not it's people walking past whether or not it's people like um you know looking at your table if your stuff is flat anyone else who is walking past and that person is at your table no one can see what's on your table in any way shape or form and it is frustrating when I walk past the table and I'm like oh there's a crowd around that table I wonder what like they've got I like to see people's work and the easiest way to do this is to elevate your table now I'm gonna insert another picture of my table again you see these black uh, things that I have these are shoe organizers you can get these on Amazon I got these ones for 24 pounds and I bought another set as well for the smaller steps that I've done um, to be able to bring my work up um, you can put your prints on this, you can have them on the table and you can display your work nice, easily and concisely so that people who may be walking past can see your work. This is a really easy way to display your work. They are lightweight, they are not too heavy and hey, you could split that between an art friend and you can have a set of cubes each so that you can both have a really good table display. However, there are alternatives to the grid cube method. Um, I've seen people use these amazing pieces of cardboard where they have built up their table and they've stapled fabric to that cardboard so that they can um, put the display, uh, prints up on that display. It's very lightweight, it's cheap, it's easy to make. There are tutorials available online. Um, and it's an easy way to have stuff that's elevated on your table without having to pay a large amount of money. Um, another alternative is cork boards. You can get these from dollar, um, dollar stores, from pound shops. You can get these from pretty much anywhere. And they are a really good way to display stuff and you can have that stood up on your table. You can put like a few boxes behind it. And this is a really good way of displaying stuff. Um, one of my friends, they used to have a pillow where they put badges on their pillow and it was a way that they could display the pillow and behind there they had a set of drawers where they could put the, all the badges in and it was easy for them to do that. There are ways without having to spend a massive amount of money to be able to have a decent display. Here's the thing, your first table, your first few tables, in fact my first three years of tables are not going to be great and you're not expected to have the most fantastic display straight away. Heck, 2011 versus 2019, there's a bit of a difference in my table display. In fact, every time I do conventions, I improve my display because I know how important it is for that table layout to not only stand out to someone so they stop by and look at the work and everything like that. Um, it's really important to cleanly display your work. Now, 
I have a lot of work. I have a lot of stuff on my display, but you don't have to have all that stuff on your table. And um, if you want it to be clean and concise, there are hundreds of ways to display your work and have it effectively. Um, but yet again, every single time you do a table, you learn. I really, really hope that this video has been somewhat helpful. I know it is very, very long, but I really hope that there are some points in there that can help you out. If you have any questions, I'll try my best to answer them in the comment section down below. But there are hundreds upon hundreds of groups out there, who are people who will happily help you, who will happily you know, point you in the right direction if you are ever confused. The whole thing is with conventions that we forget to do is to have fun. Make sure to drink like all the way through the convention. Make sure you've got meds on you. Make sure that you are looking after yourself because these days are long. We're talking some days can be like 16 to 18 hours long. They are long, long days that you are going to be on your feet, smiling, talking to people. They are very, very long days, but I personally feel like they are very, very worth it. There is nothing more heartwarming than someone coming up to you and saying how much they are inspired by your work or how much they love your work. It is amazing and I am so grateful to be able to have that. Um, and I think conventions have really not helped boost my confidence, but they've helped me understand like how to sell my work and how to understand what works for me and what doesn't work for me and it's been a long process but I feel like I'm finally in a good place with it and yes it's been a long time but it's been worth it it really has I really hope to see all of your amazing tables one day and I really hope that this video has been helpful I know it's been a very long one um but if you guys have table at conventions, let me know what your experiences are. Have you enjoyed it? Did you have fun? Because I think we forget to have fun at these events. Yes, you are working, but as well, like, have fun. There's a lot of amazing people out there who will always help you. And it's such a supportive community that I'm really, really grateful to not only be a part of this YouTube community, but also to be a part of the convention community as well. It's been a lot of fun and I can't wait to do more. I'm gonna get, I know I've gotta go and get prepped for my next one. <laughs> I've got a month to prep, yay! But I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. Maybe like, comment, and if you're new and you wish to see more content, subscribe. Let me know what you would like to see in future videos. Has this video been helpful? Um, a lot of questions being thrown to you at once and I hope you all have a wonderful day. Be good, look after yourselves, and as always folks, Stay creative.